the home of Bud and Velma Heil, and we are doing an oral history interview this morning for the Carnegie Library and the Cultural History Program with Boulder County Parks and Open Space. I am Cheryl Kippen, the um, Program Coordinator okay. for um, Cultural History, and we also have here interviewing with us, and we'll have them introduce okay, themselves. Carol? Uh, I'm Carol Bean, Boulder County Parks and Open Space. I'm the Historic Preservation Specialist oh, okay. for the county. And I'm Kevin Grady. Um, for Boulder County Parks and Open Space, I'm the uh, Highland Ranch caretaker and neighbors of Bud and Velma. Wonderful. And Bud and Velma Sundale is here as well, and I know he'll join us pretty soon too. So, um, what we're going to okay, do okay, is um, I'll do some biographical questions, okay, and then okay. I think Kevin's going to chime uh, in with some questions about the about the property and about changes in the property, perhaps, and then um, some questions about the structures pr from Carol, and we'll just see how our time goes. So, all right. <clears throat> This is also October the 16th, 2012. I don't think I said that, so that's a good thing for us to know um, when, when we are doing this. Um, let's start, first of all, with something pretty basic here. Um, Bud and Velma, when and where were each of you born? Hey, I was born in Sugar City, Colorado, okay. in 1929. All right, Velma. I was born in Calico Rock, Arkansas. And 1934. Okay. And Dale, how about you? I was born in Denver, Colorado in 1961. Okay. And Bud and Velma, what were your parents' names? Uh, John Isle and Katrina, that was my mother's name. Okay. How about you, Velma? My dad's name was John Wesley Brinsfield. And my mom was Glenna Brentsfield. And I think we know you, huh? Yes. <laughs> okay. And Velma and Bud, how about brothers and sisters? What were their names? And if you can do birth years, that would be great. Oh, my goodness. It might be tough, so <laughs> try your best. I'll for him. I'm going to give you something, but I couldn't think of, you. Think of all of them. My sister Bertha, I think she was born in 1909. I guess that's about the one I really don't really, really know. <laughs> if you just want to do names, that's fine. Just give names. Joe, Irvin, Carl. And then there was Bertha, Bertha and Catherine and Elsie and Betty. I forgot Hildy. That's about it. <laughs> I think that's it. Okay. And your brother Don. Don. Oh, Don. I forgot Don. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Don. There's too many of them. <laughs> yeah, there was ten of us. Okay. And Velma, how about you? I have one sister. And she lives in Texas. Her name is Essie May Delk. Right. And, and, oh, and she was born in 36. And Dale, how about you? I got uh, one older sister, uh, Marilyn. Uh, Marilyn Anderson now. She lives down in Texas. Uh, I guess she was born in 59, I think. Mm -hmm. and then I have a younger brother, Edward. That uh, He lives here on the ranch, just over the mountain here. He was about 16 months younger than I am. And Vilma and Bud, how did you two meet? <laughs> That's a long story. That's okay. That's what we're here for. <laughs> uh, I don't well, tell too many people because it's such a long story. <laughs> it's time to tell it then. Huh? Then you won't have to tell it again. You'll just Dawn, tell them to go to the website and listen. Don was gone with Essie, her sister. That's the way I met her. <laughs> that didn't seem too long. Well, that's pretty uh, easy. There's a lot more to it. Uh -huh. I just made it short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were engaged to get married, and they didn't get married, and we did. So. And when and where were you married? Trinity Lutheran down here in Boulder Church. Mm -hmm. And he was married in 1955. Right. Let's see. Bud, how did you 
you get your nickname? Well, when I was born, they started calling me Bobby, and my sister said they didn't want a Bobby, they wanted a Buddy, so they started calling me Buddy, and I just changed to Bud. Sure. And have you always used Bud? Are there sometimes when you use Robert instead, or Bob? Once in a while, Robert, most of the time it's Bud. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Bud and Velma, when did each of you come to Boulder County? Well, I lived in Inglewood when, when we met. We moved from Arkansas to Inglewood. And I came to Boulder County when we got married in 1955. Coming, uh, moved up to Boulder in 1959. 49. Oh, 49 is right. Just one mistake. <laughs> 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 He's getting confused, dear. <laughs> it's been a little while, hasn't it? It's been yeah. a little while. Yeah. And Bud, how did your family learn about the ranch being for sale? Those was a stockman paper that it was advertised in. Come up and looked at it and bought it. And I think some of us know this, but I'm going to ask you anyway for folks who don't. Um, was your family in ranching or farming before buying the ranch? Yeah, <coughs> we farmed and ranched and sugar. Beet. Okay. What did you raise? What did you do there? Raised sugar beets, wheat, corn, cattle. Okay. And how did you decide that this ranch would be a good purchase? What were, do you recall, some really, really deciding factors? Well, my dad had a heart attack, and they sent him to a doctor in Denver here, so he had to come to the doctor in Denver, so we come up here and bought the ranch, so he's closer to his doctor. And if you guys can, and I'm sure nothing's typical, but could you describe a typical year of ranching? What did you do when? What times of year? What do you mean? What kinds of jobs around the ranch did you do every year during each season, typically? Uh -huh. Well, we run the cows uh, year-round. Right. Then would, summer months we raised sugar beets and that and down there in Sugar oh, wow. City. Oh, well, that's here. Right. And when we come up here, we rented the farm up here and rented uh, uh, most of the hay. We did okay, raise some corn, and that's all corn and hay up here. That's okay. enough to keep you busy. <laughs> now, Bud, you did do some quarrying as yeah, well on the side. Yeah, on the side. You guys he's leaving all that out. Dabbled in that. Quarrying is not that. Don't go with ranch. <laughs> A different way of working the land, right? Yeah. 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 yeah we quarried rock and we cut firewood. It's all firewood. It was always busy. Mm -hmm. What were some ventures that you tried maybe that, that didn't work out so well or that you decided you weren't gonna weren't gonna do anymore? Was there anything you experimented with with the land or with animals that you decided? Well you never say never because you never know. <laughs> Long time. I always said that kinda of boot up here. I said I never think sugar beets again, but I haven't. Inventions or technology for ranching or farming that you think really changed things in a big way over the years? No. <laughs> That's all I've done in my life, so there was nothing else I know. There was nothing else. Okay. Yeah. And how did or did ranching change over all of the years that you ranched? What do you mean? Oh, mm -hmm. Good times, bad times, you know, difficult difficulties with economy, different things maybe with drought or things that made it more difficult or prosperous years that for some reason things went really, really well. Oh, really well when we had good wet years. Mm -hmm. But there's a drought that was bad. At one time we sold a bunch of cows off because we didn't have no feed to feed them. Sure. What year was that? I think that was 54. 
was that the worst drought, or was were some of these recent years worse? No, that was the worst one except this year. I think this year was even worse than 54. Wow. I know that, like we talked about, you opened up branching to, you know, you did some quarrying. I know Ingersoll had a contract doing quarrying and things like that, yeah. and CU. Um, I know that there were other things like paintball and tourism and things like that. How did opening the ranch up to various areas change how you were able to ranch or change ranching for you guys? And never because they used the workplace where we didn't run the cows. So you had it figured out so it was divided. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's see, how did how did paintball work on the ranch? How did you guys how did you decide to try that? Well, the guy just come in here. They wanted to start the games up in here, and we just signed a contract with him, and he started playing softball, paintballs up here. I've just about asked all of my questions, so I think we'll turn it over to Kevin and see what he has to ask. So, thank you guys. All right. So, I got a couple of questions here. You guys have heard, well, you've told me all of these kinds of things in the past, so I just think it's real interesting stuff and think it would be fun to listen to it again. Um, so, I've got a couple of uh, questions here just regarding the property. You know, I know you guys operated hay rides on the property. What were the years that you guys did that? And uh, could you tell us a little bit about how that worked and maybe a funny story about that guy from New York? <laughs> <laughs> well, we did the uh, delivery stable for 12 years. And we did uh, breakfast rides and hay rides and overnights. An hour later, either two hours or whatever. Do you remember what years that was? Do you remember, Dale? Cause you it was in the old. 80s. In the 80s and early was 90s, if I remember right. It was all through the 80s, I think. All through the 80s. Mm -hmm. And what did the hayride entail? Oh, pardon? You, they got breakfast, they got lunch, and a long hayride, right? Well, no, the hayride was at the end of the night when we had the dinner rides. Uh, we drove, drove for an hour, and then we brought them in the way, or brought them back in here on the way, on the hayride. Oh, okay. And hay rides, some of them we just started here and went up out there. We, hay rides usually was about an hour and brought them back. You had some interesting city folk on some of those hay rides, didn't you? Yeah, a lot yeah. of rides too. Right? Yeah. Um, so, where did the annual beer and steer event take place? Well, different places. They take it up here, what we call the third middle, and then up there, uh, uh, going up towards Ingersoll, and then they had some on Ingersoll. And what were those events for? They were just celebrating their beards here. They brought man home brew, and they brought it up here, and they had a party drinking beer and food and stuff. And, and I remember you telling me it was a brewer a local brewer that would come up as well as and then all your volunteer all firefighters yeah. would be up here as well, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like good times. Um, hey, so what were some of your, your family's favorite places to picnic? Ingersoll. Ingersoll, huh? That was the favorite? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'd go up there and picnic there and have lunch and then play with softball up there. Softball, yeah. yeah. That's a great meadow for it, huh? Yeah. Um, where did you take the kids ice skating? Was that Ingersoll as well? I never did go to ice skating. Oh. Most of that come out of Lions. People from Lions brought them in and skated up there on, uh, on the pond up oh. there at Ingersoll. Okay. Okay. And uh, just talking about Ingersoll, how long did uh, CU operate that mine? I really don't know when they started. They drove, um, they quit mining in, in the 50s. Oh, they quit in the 50s. They were done. Okay. How about they had brought it here, uh, I'm trying to think. They had somebody else come in here and mine it for them. After? Yeah. And when was the last time that Ingersoll Quarry was mined? 
estimate? Boy, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really, I think probably about in the 70s, early 70s. Okay. It's good to know. Um, now, you guys did a lot of uh, forest cutting and selling firewood. Yeah. And uh, did you also have uh, the Colorado State Forest Service do some work up here at one point? Yeah. But when was that? That's a good tough question again. I don't remember the year. <laughs> okay. I think I remember you saying it was the 70s or 80s, perhaps. Yeah. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you don't know when they... Uh, um, and, and and I know you guys also did Christmas trees, Christmas yeah. tree cutting? Just yeah, for, we did that. Okay. We cut Christmas trees. Mm-hmm. We'd have people go cut their own, and then we cut, uh, cut some and brought them down for... People who didn't want to go up on the hill and cut their own. Right. So you'd also provide some yeah. for people that didn't want to go up. Neat. Yeah. And I heard that you all provided trees for you, for several years for the Lutheran Church, Trinity. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. And um, um, so you were members of the church. Were there other community or um, ag organizations that you guys were members of and active in as a family? No, not that I can think of. Grange or 4-H or anything like that? Well, the Army used to come out here and do their training out here. They come out usually about once a year. Hmm. So I got a question for you in terms of all the cattle you raised. You, you raised, uh, was it Herford cattle? That's your Herford, yeah. Herford's. And what was the most amount of cattle you ever had at one time on the property? Oh, about 300. 300. What, do you remember what years that was? That was back in the 50s. Okay. Before they had the drought. Before the drought hit, yep. <coughs> Before the drought of 54? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> and then, um, had you always had Herefords? Always had Herefords. Always. And uh, as for horses, I know you also had quite a few horses on the property from time to time. And you had, uh, how many did you have? What was the most amount of horses you ever had? Oh, about 35. 35. And uh, I understand that you guys did some roundups occasionally, whether with the horses or cattle on the north end of the property. Yeah. And how, how did that work? I, I've seen some of the fencing there, where the chute that you guys had built still remains. Well, we had to get the cows to get the calves and stuff that way. We wanted to sell and we'd get them all in and gather them up and ship them in Fort Collins. Sell them. We used to sell at Denver, but we quit that. Took them to Fort Collins. And was there a special place that you'd round them up all at? Wherever they was at. We started at the north end and we went over to Forest Service and that sort of around at least two. Um, so I got a question about the, uh, just with the cattle. You guys used to do a cattle drive, right? Um, from here onto Forest Service lands to the west? Yeah. Over the saddle you mentioned? Yeah, we always take them over there in the spring and bring them back in the fall. Okay. And where where was that to the west? Where did they where did they graze? Over on Ballarat. Ballarat. Okay. Yeah. And now I got a question for you. We hear about this outlaw cabin associated with the ranch before you guys moved up here, located in the you know, the kind of southwestern part of Gear Canyon in there. Yeah. Um what did you know about that, the history of that cabin? Why was it called the Outlaw Cabin? Well, they told me a bunch of outlaws was in there. And they had their cabin built back up again in the hill, so you had to come at to, uh, to the bottom. You couldn't come around from on top. Good vantage point. Yeah. yeah. And that's not still there? I mean... It... No, it burned in a fire. Okay. Um... So I know over the years you probably dealt with trespassers on the property, right? Yeah. And um, so I was just curious, how did you guys deal with, let's say, someone that you caught hunting without permission? Well, we always ask what they was doing there. And they always had an excuse. But we just tell them to get off. Okay. Because I always had a brother, he always tell me he's going to shoot him if he caught him again. <laughs> Your brother? Yeah. yeah. Erwin? Yeah. 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 That's funny. <laughs> that must have been funny. Um, so I got a question about some of the hunting that you guys did on the property. Um, 
What were some of the animals that you most often did hunt on the property during your time? When I first came up here, all I had was deer. I think it was the late 80s, the first time we seen elk on the place. Really? Each year seemed like it got bigger and bigger. Huh. And you started actively hunting elk at, at that point? Yeah. And we got into the line, used to be a South St. Rain, and we complained about all the elk in the air, and they let it open the head of a hole here to the left hand. And you guys would let, um, would you offer hunting to other folks that would just ask, give them a, a feed? Yeah, some hunt? people, yeah. some don't, yeah. Some tips, <laughs> got it. Um, different, yeah. Um, so tell us about the time you got, your family had hunted mountain lions or allowed people to hunt mountain lions on the property. Um, I know it was about a seven year period, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, I know one time a lion had taken one of your uh, heifers. Cow. A cow. And um, and I was just wondering uh, what, how many were taken, if you can recall that number, and um, where were the places that you had the most luck on the property, picking up a track or a tree in them? Plumley Arms. What was that? Plumley Canyon. Plumley Canyon? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Do you remember how many were taken during that time? I don't know if I remember correctly, we took about 32 off a year in seven years. All right. Yeah. Wow. Um, and uh, when did you guys first notice the turkeys on the ranch? They weren't always here, right? No, about 10 years ago. That's when you were out. Huh. But your family never hunted the turkeys? Uh, Pre-1995? No. Okay. And, um, and then uh, I had asked you this earlier, but there used to be porcupines present around the area. Yeah, quite a few of them. And when, when did you notice them starting to disappear? About 10 years ago, very seldom we see one. Right. I don't think I've seen one in the last five years. Okay. And then uh, my last question regarding just the wildlife and the hunting is, uh, where did you guys observe the elk calving when you were here on the property? Up there on top by where the, what do they want to call it? Up there by Ingersoll. It's close enough. Okay. And then um, just a few more questions for you. I just have questions about any interesting weather that you observed. Uh, some Were there flood events during the time that you guys were here? Yeah. You remember the years of those? No, I don't remember the years. One of them was really bad. Yeah. When left hand flooded, or did Gear Canyon also flood? No, Gear Canyon flooded one year and left hand flooded another year, the year after that. Oh. Uh -huh. And then how about some blizzards? I know you guys have a lot of... Yeah, we have quite a few of those. Yeah. Any, any one more memorable than the other? What was the worst one? Oh, we probably had about 30 inches of snow at one time. Yeah. Maybe three feet. Oh. Um, and then uh, we did talk about drought, and you think that this year perhaps was the biggest drought year that you can remember? Yeah, but this is as bad, if not worse, than 54. Wow. Well, thanks for answering the questions. I thought those were all interesting to hear, so uh, that's all I have for you. I have a couple more. One thing, with events like the beer and steer event and other things that you guys did, what local families were you all friends with? Who did you hang out with? Well, no, you got a good question there. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. I, can't, I don't think I can mention all of them. Bill Lanham, and he was one of the best ones we had. And, uh, Al Nays Road. Al Nays Road, yeah. Al, Dale, Dale Nays Road. That was the, the, them was the best ones. Okay. Was that All right. And Dale, growing up on a ranch, what kinds of chores did you and your siblings do? Uh, we had to, uh, well, I remember feeding a lot of silage. Uh, and a lot of hay, milk some cows. At one point we had two milk cows. 
Uh, and it was my job for my chore for a long time to milk the cows uh, before school and after school. Uh, then whenever that we didn't have school were available, we were always up there uh, just feeding hay and, and the silage uh, all during the winter months. Uh, and then during calving season, I always remember, uh, well, we always had that top caboose up there. I don't know if you've been up to the corrals. We have a, a row of box cars. One of them we use as a tax shed. Another one, you know, just to store uh, ranch stuff. And the top caboose, we had it set up that after we did chores and that in the morning and the evening times, we'd go in the top caboose and drink coffee and play cards. Uh, but during calving season, uh, someone would stay up there all night long during the night time and go out every couple of hours and check the cows to make sure that if he was capping it wouldn't need to be pulled or anything. I remember going up there many times with dad. I think dad would spend one night and Uncle Don would spend a night. Uncle Irvin would spend a night. They'd all take turns spending the night. And uh, so it was kind of a challenge for us as little kids to go up there and try to stay awake all night with dad. <laughs> and, go out there and you know in a foot of snow, a foot and a half of snow and go out there with him to check the cows. Uh, to make sure that everything was okay and you know we had flashlights yeah, we thought that was fun <laughs> take each one of the cows and, good you know, times pardon? good times right? oh yeah those were good times, <laughs> were good times. you know yeah, a lot of that stuff now that i really miss you know sure yeah. what were some fun things that you all were able to do as ranch kids um mm -hmm. on the on the ranch I think the thing that we probably as a group enjoyed the most is, is we were all we all loved to hunt me, my brother, all my cousins and that. So we always look forward to hunting season every year because uh, we're all big hunters, really enjoyed that. And that was a time I wish that we just look forward to every year to get together. And uh, in growing up, uh, I mean, their opportunities on the ranch were just limitless. You know, when everyone else, all our friends in school and stuff, they were playing with their cars and trucks. We had BB guns and pellet guns and 22s. And, you know, we were running around on the ranch, uh, uh, you know, we'd shoot our army man rather than play with them uh, and, and stuff like that, you know, and then, you know, do a lot of hiking. We used to uh, take off and hike all the way back to Lyons over by the side of the country. And, you liked to ride in too. Yeah. Like you know, so we did a lot of hiking. Uh, got some mountain bikes, we did some mountain biking in here, you know, I mean, years ago before they come out with the mountain bikes they had nowadays. Uh, the ones that was hard to pedal uphill. <laughs> uh, and then we did a lot of riding also. Uh, so we got the riding stables and then had to ride all the time. And then it got to be a real chore. Uh, we used to sit up there. It wasn't fun anymore, huh? Yeah. Uh, people like to come in when it's 90 degree weather and they have to go for horseback rides. So we'd argue about who was going to take out the next ride. <laughs> uh, so. But that was the part that we probably enjoyed the least was the riding stables. Mm -hmm. Except for the breakfast rides and the steak fry rides. Everyone wanted to take those, but the rides during the daytime, we'd argue about who was going to take those out. <laughs> Who provided the breakfast? I mean, you say breakfast. You. Yeah, we would. Uh, uh, you would cook and every, you'd do it all? I, I'd done some cooking up there. That's a lot. Yeah. Hmm. How many people were we talking here? Oh, anywhere. I think we had a limited what five or six to go on the breakfast rides and stuff yeah a limit of five six. yeah i think a limit of five or six but most groups you know we get us some groups up around 30 35. i remember having groups large enough where we really didn't have enough horses to supply horses for everybody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so on the breakfast rides and steak fried rides we used to get some pretty pretty large amounts of people that would come out and do those you must have been busy did you have help we had help. Yeah. You had help. help. I was going to say, I, I more than one woman could handle. I didn't always do it. I'd done it one summer when that was the summer that Don broke his arm and couldn't do it. So I helped all summer, and I helped off and on, but we had some other people that helped, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of so work. had three or four cooks. Yeah, she always had so. have three or four. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. and along with the cooking, Velma, um, did you do ranch work or what it, or, or did you, you know, was the house your spot? The house was my spot and that kept me busy. But I did do some up there too, you know, and I enjoyed it when I done it. 
It was kind of off and on. If I was needed, I would go do it. If there was enough cooks, then I didn't. That's the way it, kind of the way it went. But well, raising three children—that's plenty of work, right? Yep. Yeah. That's plenty of work. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with and us. feeding them. Especially and with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. A lot of dishes. A lot of laundry. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And what about ranch hands? Did you all have a lot of ranch hands over the years, and some that stuck around for a while? No, mostly just uh, people around here that we knew would come out and help us when we needed. Just friends that liked to help. be around. Yeah. So. And I know the last ranch hand you had was uh, James. James, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was up here for 14 years? Yeah, about 14 years. About 14. Mm -hmm. And where did he stay on the property? Up there in the caboose. Oh yeah, that was his place. Yeah. And so he just kind of lived for free to, in exchange, helping out yeah. around the ranch. Yeah, a place to live. Okay. Oh, we fed him a lot. You know? And you fed him. Yeah. When was the last year he was here? Two thousand and one or two. I don't remember when he left. I don't either. Something like that. Something like two. I remember when I moved up here, he was here for, I think, 2002, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. That was when I moved in, and he was only there for a few months, and yeah. then went back to Arkansas. Yeah, Don, he passed away, and he took it kind of bad, because he was up there, and he thought it was his fault. Trying to convince me it wasn't, and I asked him, I said, James, you passed away, what do you want me to do? He went back to Arkansas and come back and packed up his stuff and went back. Never did come back. Tried to call him, but he never did call me back. Hmm. We didn't really know what the real deal was, you know. And sure. So. All right, Carol. I think I'm. I think I'm set for now. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm going to ask you more specific questions about the buildings, since I want to. Well, my job for the county, I deal with all the historic buildings and the Indian stuff. So my questions will solely be about the buildings that are on the property or some of the stone remnants that are still left and I have pictures to help so I'm just going to start asking about the buildings and if you could fill in what you know that would be great because mm -hmm. you know more than I know because I know a little bit but I think you could <coughs> help me out understanding the buildings that are on the property. So I know your dad and your mom bought the property in 1949 right? Yeah. And by then all ten of your all Ten children were born in Sugar City, right? Yeah. Yep. So you all came up here in 1949 when you bought the ranch, not right? Not all of them. No, not all of them? No. no. No, just who came up here then? Um, four of us boys. It was Irvin, Joe, and Don, and me. Uh-huh. And uh, Bertha and Hilda come up. So that's quite a few. Yeah. Yeah, that's a long haul from Sugar City. Yeah. In 1949 on dirt roads, I suspect. Well, most of us were blacktop coming out of there. Were they? Except... And coming up in July, it must have been hot. Yeah. Do you, was it hot when you came up? Part of the time, it was cool. It would come up in the fall, some of it. Right. So, it um, took us about two years to get everything moved up. That's a long time. How old were you when you finally came up here? Twenty. Twenty. I thought you were a grown man. Yeah. You were twenty. So you remember it very well, Yeah. coming up here. And so when you got here at 20, what houses were, were here? I know this one, was this house here? No. No. So what houses were here? That house right up there. Is that Irwin's house yeah. over there? So that and, one was yeah. there. And the house where Kevin is. Kevin's house is there. And then the schoolhouse, the Altona the school schoolhouse, was yeah, there. That's, that's so there were, the, there was three houses yeah. here when you got here. Irwin's house, um, your house. Joe's house. Joe's house and the schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. What house did you guys live in? What? When you first moved here, of those three houses, where, where did you make your home? Well, Irvin lived in the one down below. Uh -huh. Joe lived on the one top one. And we rented a farm down here on, uh, what road is it? Iowa Road. Oh, so you rented a farm off? Because yeah. I figured with that many, you didn't have enough place for all you no. people to, to hang out. While you we farmed that, and then we moved a house in up here. You moved a house that, in up here? Yeah, that one over there where Don lived. Oh. By the schoolhouse. Oh, oh, you moved that in. I had that moved in. Oh, Vir I saw that it was called Virginia's house, the one that's right next to it. Yeah. So yeah, that was moved in. That was moved in. Where did that 
be, where was that originally from? Do you know? Down where in it Boulder. Be? In Boulder? So you went and bought it? And you moved yeah, it? Yeah, they had the officers putting some subdivision or something in uh -huh. there. And then they moved a bunch of houses out of there, and that's where we got that house. So did you guys move it, or did you hire We some? had it moved in. You had it moved in. Wow. And who lived in that house, then, once you moved it in? Folks, Mom and Dad, I lived there. So everybody lived there one time or another. Yeah. Yeah. And then Ed's house, is that Ed's house above it? And that was Bert's house. Bert had that house moved in. I, that was another one that was moved in. Yeah. Interesting, I she did not that know that. She moved in when she retired because she was a nurse uh -huh. in uh, Denver. I see. And she had that moved in when she retired. Did you say Bert as in Bertha Jo? Bertha. Bertha, yeah, Bertha Jo. So, that was, so she had that moved in. You had Virginia's house moved in, but multiple family members lived yeah. in there at the time. Who lived in the schoolhouse? Sister Hildy. Hildy lived in the I knew somebody lived in the schoolhouse. Yeah. So Hildy and her husband Wayne Wayne lived in there. That's a pretty small spot. Yeah. And so did Wayne add on to it? Yeah. He did. He added two rooms on. Did he do that himself? He was handy. Well, his dad come out and helped him. I helped a little bit. Uh huh. Because when you moved here, it was just the stone building, right? Yeah. Right. And so that this wasn't going to work, so we had uh, to put a bathroom on it, probably. Yeah. And did that. That's interesting. Because I know you didn't have enough houses here for all of you in the beginning. So, uh, sticking with the schoolhouse, when I listened to your 1995 oral history with your brother Don and Hildy was in it and Bertha Jo, I remember hearing her in it too, that they talk about the schoolhouse a little bit. And um, one of you guys, either you or your brother Don, said on the tape that um, the school owned the building but they leased the land from the ranch. And then eventually you guys bought the building? Yeah. Yeah? So you bought the building from the school district. From the school district, yeah. Do you remember when that was? Roughly? Right after you got here? Yeah, the, the 50s. In the 50s? Yeah. Did you do a bill of sale or anything like that? Just a handshake. Just a hand, that was a handshake. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember how much you bought it for? $150. <laughs> You got a steal. <laughs> At that time, that was a lot of money. <laughs> you, st you took them you know, to the people cleaners. Back, you, you back in the 40s and 50s, <laughs> well, people didn't have nothing. Uh -huh. And that found in $50 was a lot of money. Sure. Well, you're lucky you were able to do that. Yeah. yeah. So you bought it from the school district for 150 bucks and a handshake. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and they're probably like, good luck with it, right? <laughs> no, just... It's a wonderful it was, building. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's a it's a lovely. It was just house. empty, and we just bought it. Mm hmm Because we moved when we come up here, we moved a lot, of, put a lot of stored stuff in the schoolhouse when mm -hmm. we come up. Well, wonderful. Well, you got a good deal on that for one hundred and fifty. No, it was high. Yeah. <laughs> so you thought you were getting taken to the cleaners from the school yeah. district. <laughs> <laughs> People don't realize back in the forties. If we had a nickel, we thought we had the money. Yeah, wow. So was there any, do you remember ever going inside? I know it was a schoolhouse, and I have one historic picture of the inside of the teacher standing. And of course I got these great photos of them standing outside of it. You yeah. know, there was hardly any trees on the property at that time. There wasn't too well. No, hardly any. There's not a tr barely a tr tree in sight. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Oh, this one's even worse. This one doesn't even have any trees on it. <laughs> have you seen these before? Oh, oh well, here. Me, I've seen that. I know yes. what it looked like. I haven't seen that. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. At least I think I remember that. A lot of history <laughs> there. Yeah. Uh, there was nothing there. No. The schoolhouse. <laughs> Not much. I know. It doesn't even look like the same place. No, no I really don't. No, up here on the hill. Let me see that other one. The kids uh, <laughs> built a little bit of a shack up here, and I, uh, some of it's still there. What was the shack for? They just built a little house that they played in. Oh, kids when it was play house school. thing? Yeah. Well, that's wild. Well, kids will do that. It's still there? Is some of it's still there? Just right up over the rise here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, hmm. <laughs> they did a good job, that. huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you see this one? <laughs> Let me see them. <laughs> 
Uh, when we got married in 55, there was really not, uh, we was just way out in the boonies. Sure. There wasn't the Lake of the Pines or Crestview or no, none of that stuff was here. And the, just very few houses down here on left hand in 1955. There was a service station right down here. Yeah, the there corner. was a service station down there. Where the Greenbrier Inn is? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And there was just nothing else. So you had to go to Boulder or Longmont for your groceries? Yeah, we still do that. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah I know still you still do, do it, but was, it probably seems like a lot further back then. Yeah. There was a service station that had the grocery store with it. Yeah. Uh -huh. But we didn't buy anything there. It was, you know, higher than. Sure. Like today. The same thing. Yeah. Now, so. on the schoolhouse, so there was no, they were done having school in there the time we got here in 49. It was just sitting empty. Just sat empty. Just sat empty. Good. Well, that made, was there anything left inside or was it already cleaned out? Oh, no, it was already cleaned out. Um, nothing okay. left. Nothing, no, no souvenirs. Oh. Now, this I, looks like a little house on the prairie. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine going to school in there? My goodness. Yeah. A little else on the curb. I know you must have had a lot of people who would drive by because the schoolhouse sits right on the road. Did you ever have anybody come by, knock on your door, or try to peek in the windows of the schoolhouse or to ask you, I used to go to school there. Did anybody ever ask you to go inside or anything? Or was oh, it yeah, one guy come back here. Yeah. He said he said lot in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> he wore the dunce school hat, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. The dunce hat in the corner? I don't know if the dunce hat or not, but he had it in the corner. He sounded that way about it. Uh huh. Well, I figured there had to be somebody who stopped by, came back, and wanted to take a look at the schoolhouse. And, yeah. You know, good memories for a lot of these people, that yeah. schoolhouse. <coughs> well, I know you got a barn up, that, up the road a little bit. You call it the party barn. Was that here when you bought the property? No. You built it. We had a garage moved in and built onto it. Another building, that's, see, that's more than I knew. So you had a garage moved in and then you built on to, to make it yeah. the party barn that we call it today. Yeah. Was it, did it, was it always the party barn or was it used for some other, for your ranching stuff before it became the party barn? No, it was always the party barn. It was always the party barn. We moved it in when we did the delivery business. Uh, what was the mm -hmm. delivery business? That was the horse riding and oh, like riding. Oh, the that. livery business, I say. Yeah. I put a D on that, I'm sorry. So yeah. it's the livery business. Yeah. He I did thought you said put delivery. a D on it, it's not supposed to have a D. Huh? So you was a garage and then you built onto it. Interesting. Yeah. Did, uh, we'll talk about the corrals. Oh, you can have them if you want. Oh, do you yeah. want them? No, you can yeah. have them. Okay. Oh, here's one more. I'm surprised I found so many of them. Oh, okay. So they're all yours. <laughs> so. Up by the corrals and the cabooses and stuff like that. Was that here when you came, or did you guys build all that and bring those in? We brought those in. You bought. Where'd you get the Where'd you get the cabooses and other cars uh, from? Most of them come from the Boulder here, or the North End, the Boulder. Those guy who always bought them old cars and that. Mm -hmm. And he had a daughter that had a daughter that got sick and he needed some money, so we we bought some off him. Do you remember how much those were for? I think the most we paid for one of those was $200, oh, well, and if you, I remember right. And you hauled them up here yourself? No, I had them brought up. You had them brought up. That's I had an A-frame, mm -hmm. and he put them on there and brought them up. Well, that's good. Yeah, you see, you don't hardly see a ranch without a caboose or a railroad car on it yeah. that was used for something. It was good, easy storage, already yeah, prefabricated, storage. Mm -hmm. came ready. So in the, your 1995 interview, either you or your brother mentioned teepee rings. The interviewer said, what about the Indians on the property from long ago? And I think you or Don had some, said something, there's teepee rings up there. Do you know anything about teepee rings? Have you guys ever seen any teepee rings? Yeah, they were up there. We're up there? Well, I got a map of the property. I don't know, maybe it'd be better if Dale, because Dale was shaking his head. Yeah. Do you want to... Tell me where they were approximately. You can mark on that, it's no big deal. So there are TP rings here. Yeah, but I think they're pretty well gone. Yeah. They're pretty well gone? Yeah. Trees and everything's moved in around them. Moved in around them. Did you find any, ever find any arrowheads or any other types of Indian stuff up here? I found one. Found one arrowhead. That's it. 
That's amazing. Yeah, you know, we had a guy that used to log up here, Russell Purdue. Uh -huh. He had a knack for that kind of stuff. He found a bunch of them up here. Arrowheads, yeah. 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 I mean, we'd be walking along. We're walking down there. We had a canyon one day, and there was, I think, four of us, and all three of us walking right alongside of the road. He found an arrowhead about this long, you know, of a spear. Really? With a part of a stick still on it. That everyone else walked by it, and he just kind of had a knack for just... Sure. Know, he just, you got to... You gotta walk with your head down yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. maybe <laughs> quite a few of them up here. Well, that's amazing. You guys probably were pretty impressed about that, huh? Mm -hmm. So, well, that's you know we figured the Indians had to have been along here. Yeah. But with all the quarrying and all the other people that came before you, they probably just picked mm -hmm. everything up. Yeah. Didn't a stagecoach? They said a stage stage coach coach used to come through, through here. here. Stagecoach did through mm -hmm. Gear Canyon or Marietta. Yeah, or? Gear Canyon and. Oh, what's that called? Another canyon. It went in the chain style. Uh -huh. so the teepee rings was really kind of back over in here a little bit. I see. It wasn't on the part of the. On the ones this is for sale, right? Yeah, gotcha. It, it was back uh, where the where we used to call the CU gate where the now the trailhead starts. Mm -hmm. it, it it just back like oh if we, you know where Red Rock Quarry is. <clears throat> Is down from Red Rock Quarry. We used to have the salt blocks and that running right through there. They just right along the road going up to uh, Red Rock <laughs> Quarry. Oh, I, I think that's the turns around. Oh, yeah, to Red yeah, Rock yeah, Quarry. yeah. There was three teepee rings right before you started going up the hill. Oh. Down right fairly close to where the creek is at down Interesting. There. Okay. I'm going to have to go up there sometime. You know that's what he's nice. talking about since you're more familiar with the property than I, I might am. have to take him up. Yeah, I can <laughs> you up there, I can right? take you up there. Oh, sure. wow, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think Bud's waiting for you to take him up there anyway. I had, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. we got to do it. We'll do it. Yeah, well, great. And then this canyon was supposed to, is, is named after Chief Left Hand. Right. And he's supposedly just right down here at the bottom of Gear Canyon mm -hmm. is where that his tribe was at. Yeah, sure. Oh. Well, it's perfect territory. I mean, right mm. along the foothills, probably good hunting. Yeah. Yep, just mm. like Rabbit Mountain is full of sites. Oh, yeah. Sites. It's just full of them. A lot of teepee rings still up there. So, you know, if they're there, they were here yeah. type of thing. They didn't, you know, yeah. they just probably followed the water and um, the food, the food source. So, well, that's good. I appreciate you pointing them out. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The smile when oh. you tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, you, you <laughs> laughed when I brought it up, <laughs> and then I was like, ah. And we just started a ride that was out there, and we was back on for a two-hour ride, and we went back up there. We was on the hill going there. The guy asked me, says, you still have trouble with the Indians? And I said, oh, once in a while, about once a month. <laughs> she kind of looked at me and she says, boy, I hope they don't bother us today. <laughs> then we needed that on the tape. The tape wasn't going. No, yeah. Oh, it, okay. And this was in the so, 1980s? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, you should have had your son or your somebody come out with a full Indian headdress and scare the bejeebus out of these people. Yeah. <laughs> You know, come riding on horseback. And <laughs> you know, we did that uh, with a, had a group, the Dungeons and Dragons come in, and they were up at Ingersoll. And one night we all got together, me and Steve and, and Ed and Sue, a bunch of us got together and dressed up like Indians and rode through their camp. And there were in there some big tent doing whatever they, they do up there. Uh, and we rode through uh, their camp hooting and hollering and uh, acting like a bunch of Indians at all. And they were mad. <laughs> they, were, they come running out. They were throwing rocks and everything at us. <laughs> but it was fun. I'm oh, sure. Good times. Yeah. I forgot to ask you about this house. So this house was not here when you came. No. no. So you guys decided to build another house. Who was we moved into the house out here and we built on. This house we moved out here. After we got married. Oh, so this was another moved-in house. Yeah. yeah. From Boulder. Yeah. Yeah. So you bought another house. Well, then you, you found them all. So you moved it up here and then you added on to it. And that was yeah. when? And f do you remember when you? Was it? Were you here? Was this? Sixty-three. Yeah. Sixty-three. No. No. That was when we moved in here. But when did? Yeah. Oh, we moved yeah. in in sixty. Okay. I think it was. We moved up here when Ed was a year old, I remember that. But we lived in Inglewood for a while. After you got married? After we got married, because we had no place to stay, and then we finally got this place, moved in here, and and we moved in in 
63 years. 63. 64. Ed was born in 63. So about so. 1964, you had this moved in. We had, I was moved in here. We had to fix it. Moved in here, and we had to get it fixed up. I see. So, and we lived in just that part of the house for several years with three kids, mm -hmm. and then we built this room on later. And I don't remember what year that was. Do you? Don't remember. Yeah. It's amazing so what this you was, do way back then. Oh yeah, you moved a lot. You don't move buildings yeah. too much anymore. It's too complicated, no, it's too expensive. Too complicated, yeah. Right. So this was always your house. See, I thought it might have been your parents' house or no, no. This is always the your house. The one that uh, they're just calling Virginia's house yes. was his parents' house. Was it? Uh huh. Yeah. I right. see. And then who lived in Kevin's house? Joe. Joe, Joe lived up there. Yeah. Oh. And Irwin only lived in Irwin's house. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Well, that's good to know. And that was already here, huh? Yeah. That, that was here. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. Well, that was helpful to know that these were all moved in. Uh, but Kevin's house, Joe's house, was always here. That, that was, was always that here. was here. That was yeah. one of the, that was the only one that wasn't moved in. No. Right. Well, well Earth's house wasn't moved in either. It no. was here. No, it was here. In the school. House. Not you don't move too many stone houses. No. no. <laughs> Well, I have a couple quick questions for you. There's some other non, there's other some stone things around the property, stone, stack stone. And I was wondering if you knew what they were, any of you. So there's like, I got some pictures so you can pass them around. They must look familiar to you since you yeah, have some, do you know what these are? Yeah. Yeah, what are they? This is was a building up there as a, uh... On the road going up to English, I just to get up on top of the hill. Mm -hmm. That's where this house here is. And that, so that was a house? That was a house. They tell us that was a house. But you never saw a, something on top that was no. just the foundations when you got no. here? Just like that. Just like that. Oh, that one up on Ingersoll had a chimney for a long time. Does yeah. that, is that Still has the chimney. Still has the yeah. chimney. The water down, though. I don't know, blow down and somebody knocked it down. So. That chimney was real tall. It, it was like 30, 35 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not that tall anymore. It was it, real tall. It, but it must I think have been built well, though. But it was, it was all like foundations, as you see, when you guys got yeah. there. There was no wooden structure around it. No. People weren't living yeah. in it. No. no there was, what I remember, just a big, tall chimney that was there. And then there was, oh, just a remnant of the rock walls that was maybe about this tall for a good portion of the way around it uh, where the chimney was and there was another part of a little house uh, that about half of it that was still there with the rock all the way around it so, and it used to have some timber in that that you could see where the roof in that once was I doubt if it's still stuck anymore there's a little bit yeah I think this right here is the I don't, I don't know what that ever was. It was just like an old dry well, I think, that's above the corrals there where you guys used to, we used to throw hides and stuff in there. Yeah, I figured what they said. See. I don't remember what this, it was. Now, where was this, yeah. honey? Is that a, that's not the one up there above that meadow, where is it? Oh, this is up at Ingersoll. And that was at Ingersoll. Mm -hmm. But none of them have had a wood sure? structure on top no. of it. It was always just no. those foundations when you got here. Yeah, yeah that's good. So the outlaw cabin was the only building. No, that's the one right above the first meadow. That's what I thought. It is. That's where? Up above the first above meadow the up first there? Above the first meadow, the little rock that's, building right up there. Uh, that's what the I thought it meadow. was. The one that still is Oh, rock. I know what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. That's up yeah. by the ridge, right? Okay. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. The that's ridge. what I, when I looked at it, I thought, well, that's got to be up that by that the first place. Yeah, that's a limestone there. quarry. That's yeah. the place where limestone they... Limestone quarry. Yeah. That's where they made uh, uh, sharpened stones. That's where that was. That, that's where I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah, the redstone structure, I don't know if we ever knew what that was or not. That would... No. We just used to use it to. Now, was this up above the corral, Sunny? I don't yeah. remember that. Hides, I see. Hides and stuff in there. That was up above yeah. the corrals, that one? Because this, I that think other one, I don't remember that, that. one. Is that what you think that hides in? Yeah, yeah, that's it right there. That's right. Oh. You go 
straight up the corral is where the road is. You stay on this road and you, as you start going around the first corner up there, just off to the right, across the creek, up on the hill there, leading up into the first meadow is this oh. right here. Oh, okay. Okay. But was, that was my question, if you ever, if there was something wood built on top of it, but you said it was just always those stone foundations yeah. when you got yeah, here. Yeah, it was something for somebody a long time before you guys yeah. got here. Yeah. Well, that's long fine. Long time ago. But this you Maybe may, for the these you may recognize. This is over by the, <laughs> these are the buildings <laughs> behind the schoolhouse. And I want to know, there's the garage. Did you guys bring those in? Right over yeah. here? Yeah. That was uh, that toilet was... I think that was the schoolhouse toilet. Yeah. I have a picture, and you can see the the privy in the background in one of those old photos. Yeah. But you guys built this stuff. That was brought in, yeah. Yep, that's a garage, right? Yeah, and that there used to be chicken house that built that. What, is this it? Is that the chicken house? Yeah. That's the chicken house. All right, well, that's good to know. What about the stucco building? That's a stucco, that's a, um, brother-in-law had that moved in and he had a stucco, he built that building. There. Another moved in, huh? What about, was the garage moved in? Yeah. Oh. Thrifty. Oh, sure, sure. They're just right over here. <laughs> yeah, I just took them a little. Was moved in. Yeah, what's that? Cousin law built that. Which this one? This garage is about ready stucco. to fall down. The stucco, now. he built that one. It's getting really bad now. The whole back blew out of it. Oh, it, oh really? I know Steve said they had to get everything out of it because it was been about since ready. Then. Oh, since they since got then the then roll off here while back? Oh. Wow. Well, that's mm. helpful to know that you guys built those or brought them in. Yeah. Well, that's good. Mm. Well, thank you. I think that's all I have. And this is the chicken house. The chicken house blew down, too. Yeah. <laughs> They're not built forever, right? <laughs> no. Well, no, not around here. the winds around here. Yeah, exactly. It's like oh. the Wyoming, Wyoming South. I used to live in Wyoming. I know, <coughs> I know what the wind is. You don't have <laughs> yeah. a picture of the big, long shed we put up. What's that? Part of it's already blew off the roof. Uh -huh. Everything blew we, off this last winter. I was putting on all kinds of roofs. Oh, yeah? Complaining about it, and Dad's telling me, well, me and Uncle Don put this on there. Well, okay. me and Dave put this on. How, how many times has this roof been put on there? <laughs> <laughs> and we just have a few minutes left on this tape and this battery. Okay, I I'm think done. we're all through with our questions, right, Kevin and Carol? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything else that you all would like to say about you know, your time on the ranch, Boulder County, you know, living on living on the land, working the cattle. Well, it was a good life here. I always didn't like it here. He still I don't think does. the county liked me here, but I did. <laughs> 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 Is that what you want to hear? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I think I was the one that talked him into selling this bottom part of it. Uh, because to me, there it just wasn't the same here without the whole ranch. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not the same to any of the kids without the whole ranch. I mean, sure. growing they up where it. the party barn is and where the trailhead in, begins, we used to have a gate there with a big CU on it. We called it the CU gate. And to us, the ranch really didn't start until you hit the CU gate. Yeah. I mean, you didn't do no hunting. You didn't do nothing. You didn't shoot none down by the houses, by the corrals or nothing. You know, so... To us, the ranch really didn't start until you hit the CU gate. <laughs> Once you hit the CU gate, then you can start hunting or whatever you were, you know, were doing. Uh, so, you know, once the bulk of the ranch sold, you know, it just didn't seem the same anymore. Anything else from y'all? Not that I can think of, not off my hand. Okay. Thank you very much for yeah. having us in your home and sharing your memories with us and answering our questions. Thanks a bunch. Good deal.